In this example, we have an eight input multiplexer. The idea here is that we have eight input lines numbered zero through seven, one output line labeled out, and three address lines labeled A, B, and C. Depending upon the address placed at A, B, and C, one of the input lines will be routed to the output line. What would you use something like this for? Well, if you had a serial line and you had a byte come in and you needed to send the byte out bit by bit, with the use of a timer, of course, that you would say which bit you wanted to go out, it would go out on the line, then you would say the next bit, it would go out on the line, and so forth. You would serialize the eight bits into individual bits to be sent over the line. So this is a multiplexer. It's kind of complicated in appearance, but it's really quite simple. As you see it right now, the input address is 000. Now, the input addresses can range from 000, which is 0, up through 7, 111. And that, are, that is eight individual values. So if we have, uh, we, go, we can cite, if we see with the 000s, uh, data value zero, 1 is in fact being sent to the output. If the data value is 0, the output is 0. The data value is 1, the output is 1. Now, in order for that to happen, you'll notice down here the, the three address lines, they're all zeros. Now, the actual address lines, their values coming up here are zero, so they're not going to affect anything. However, each of the address lines goes through an inverter and becomes not zero, but one. Now, if you follow it all the way up, you can see the light green. One of the, the, A, the line C comes up and attaches to AND gate zero. Likewise, the address line B becomes one at AND zero the AND gate zero, and the address line A similarly. So we have three ONs here, three ONES. The only thing necessary, of course, is the data line, and that's the extra one, which if it's off, you get out, off at the output. If it's ON, you get ON at the output. In all other cases here, there's at least one or more address lines which are zero. Therefore, the ANDs cannot fire. So if we look at the next one here at AND gate number A1, we see that although uh, two of the lines are one because they're coming from the, where they're coming from? They are coming from uh, the knotted versions of lines A and B. The C line, however, coming forward is not connected. The, the inverted line is not connected here. It's the uninverted line. So A1 has got, an, uh, has got a zero in one of its inputs. It can't fire. Doesn't matter what the value is here, it has no effect. Let me turn this off and you can see there's no effect. Has no effect on the output. Likewise, for AND number two, it gets two of its lines, one of which is the inverted address line A. That's, that's on. The other one is the inverted address line C. However, the last address line here is, uh, is in fact uh, the inverted B address line. So there, and which is a zero. So coming in here, it can't fire. Doesn't matter what happens to the value D2, it, uh, this AND cannot fire. And we could go down the list here until we get all the way down to A7. And A7 consists of the addresses coming in from the uninverted, all three uninverted address lines. So at A7 here, they're all off. And of course, even if the data line goes on, it can't get out. Does it work with the others? Well, let's put a one here. Um, and you see there it's working. Uh, if I have the address 001, which is 1, uh, you can see that D1 can get to the output. Not, D0 can't. D2 can't, again, for the same reasons, because uh, there's, there's, uh, there's lines that are um, off in each one of those when address line 1 is on, address line C is 1, A and B are 0. So, um, so we can do that. If I move to the next value, which would of course be one zero or two, uh, that would mean that the uh, the, the next one here, uh, D two, would be the one that's capable of getting to the output. And you see it is. You can see it's got three uh, ons, three greens coming in here, and we're fine. Um, these up here have no effect, uh, no effect, no effect. But you can see that because they've got. They've got zeros going into the AND gate. The next one would be three. 
Now, it, now that activates D3, can get to the output, whereas D2 here is no effect. Well, let me shut off D3, um, and you can see none of these. In it. But again, of course they can't get there because they've got zeros in there, and that's true all up and down the line. The next one um, would be 4, and D4, you see, now works. And again, the others will not work because they've got zeros. Next one would be 5, and D5, sure enough, there now it's working. Again, the others are not working. They have no effect on it. The next one would be um, next one would be six. Whoops, leave that on. Turn that one on. Turn that one off. D6 now is active, and the when the address is six, then the data value D6 can get to the output. And finally, when the value is one 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 or seven, the value from D7 can get to the output. So this is an interesting circuit. It has a lot of possible uses and so forth, but it's, um, it looks complicated, but in reality, it's, it's not all that complicated. It does take some thought to arrange this, but it is not, not, not difficult to come. This is a multi-unit or unit, so if any one of them is coming in, it gives you a single output. In this case, we have eight uh, inputs to this or, so it kind of got a little extended.